We heard a little more about foreign policy and specifically Libya. Here's the clip that was seen around the world. You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. It was not a Please spontaneous proceed. demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Please proceed, Governor. I, I, I want to make sure we get that for the record, because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little louder, Candy? He, he did call it an act of terror. It did as well take it did as well uh, take uh, two weeks or so uh, for the whole idea of there being a riot out there about this tape uh, to come out. You're correct uh, this, about that. All right, so Obama, with a little help from uh, the moderator, uh, Candy Crowley, blackened Mitt Romney a bit, but some context and perspective are necessary on this Benghazi gate business. That's why we're going to one of the best in the business, Clifford May at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies in Washington. Hi, Cliff. Hi, good to be with you, Charles. What did uh, Mitt Romney try to do, and uh, what will he likely do better in Florida in five days? Uh, debate number three. Well, what, what I think wasn't done properly was to, to create, as you say, the context for this. It's I mean, the question of what uh, President Obama said immediately afterwards and how he characterized it. That's important, but here's what's more important. This happened in Libya because, I would argue, the Obama administration has been pushing a narrative that isn't true. That narrative is that al-Qaeda has been defeated and that the tide of war is receding. That, that's an uh, Obama quote. And therefore, why bother to be really on guard on the anniversary of 9-11 if the tide of war is receding and al-Qaeda has been defeated? Now, al-Qaeda has not been defeated. It's been resurgent in a lot of different places in the world. It's, uh, I, I think in some ways it's stronger. It's different than it was. It doesn't have the same capabilities. It doesn't have the same leadership as it did when Osama bin Laden was there, but its ideology is probably ascendant. And if you don't understand the disease, you can't prescribe the proper medicine. And I think that's what Romney needs to talk about, assuming he understands it, that we do have a global conflict to fight against jihadists, al-Qaeda jihadists, Iranian jihadists, and other versions. They are waging a war against us, and they get to decide whether it's receding, and our retreating doesn't end the war. I think Romney's up on that file. I think uh, last night he thought he had a gotcha moment and it wasn't uh, quite there. Let me just uh, offer some more context on, on last night. The questioner, the, the audience member in Hempstead, New York, had a really good question, and it was essentially, who screwed up? Who didn't provide mm -hmm. enough security when there were clearly lots of warnings flashing that more security was necessary in Benghazi. Now, I thought, and it's easy to have 20-20 hindsight naturally, I thought if Mitt Romney had pressed the president on that and said, Mr. President, would you please answer this American citizen's question? Who screwed up and what have you done about that, that screw up? Is, is, does that person, is that person still, still working for the State Department? Is that, that person still working in, in national security? Your turn. I think you're absolutely right, and I think he could have said, look, in my administration, if something like this happens, uh, there are people who will be fired, and I'll go further than that. Nobody ever again will kill Americans with impunity, which is what has been happening too often. I will go after not just those who pulled the trigger or detonated the bomb. I will go after those who gave the order, those who provided the financing, and I will go after the organizations that are responsible. And this is something we haven't been doing, at least going back to 1979, when our embassy was seized and our diplomats taken hostage, and we never really had any repercussions uh, other than to break off relations for what was essentially, legally, an act of war committed against us by the uh, Khomeini re uh, regime. Now, Clifford, uh, I saw... Romney's error last night is what we like to call these days a, a, an unforced error. I mean, he didn't, he, didn't have to, he didn't have to do that. But sometimes an unforced error forces a conversation. Much of the mainstream media hasn't wanted to talk about Benghazi take, uh, ben, Benghazi mm. gate. Doesn't this particular incident last night force the media to talk about this and to talk about it with, with substance? 
I hadn't thought about that, but that's a great point. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, you've been talking about it, I think, in the U.S. Uh, Fox News has been talking about it, but you haven't seen a lot of it on, uh, on other cable networks, and I've seen a lot of days go by with it not being on the front pages of the major newspapers. This does bring that discussion uh, back into the spotlight, if you will. And, uh, and, and I think there should be people thinking what happened in Libya, what happened in Cairo, what happened in about a dozen other places. Uh, is, uh, what does it mean, not only that our, our, our diplomats are, have, been, have been murdered, but that the Al-Qaeda flag is flying over the embassy in Cairo? How are we responding to that? And are we only responding? Are we not doing something proactive to go after those who uh, consider themselves our sworn enemies and who say that they are going to destroy us. And again, that includes Al-Qaeda. I would argue, I and mean, it's pretty clear, it includes as well the revolutionary regime in, in Tehran, which has for 33 years been saying there will be a world without America. They will help bring it about. Romney also last night, uh, in a not-so-subtle way, got the president to actually accept responsibility for what happened in Benghazi. Well, except what does what does it mean to accept responsibility? Uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton also said, "I take responsibility." But taking responsibility often means I did something wrong. I wasn't up to the job. I didn't do what needed to be done. People died as a result. Therefore, I resign. Or at least it means here's how we're going to change our policies in the future because our policies in the past have been shown to be failing. I haven't heard that. Simply saying I take responsibility, simply saying the buck stops with me, doesn't mean that it does if nothing if no action follows that. Clifford, uh, we love having you visiting with us in Canada. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Always good to be with you in Canada. Clifford May in Washington.